Hello, in this video I am going to talk about some basic things that you have to know while doing Agile estimation. So first, when do we do an Agile estimation? Typically it happens in the sprint refinement session where the stories are prioritized and the prioritized stories is picked up for the discussion. The dev team, product owner all discuss on the story, get the clarity and then they go for this estimation. Next, what is the estimation unit? The most popular method is story points using Fibonacci series and people also use t-shirt size sometimes. So if you're not sure about what is Fibonacci series and why do we use that for story point estimation, please check out my video, the link in the description below. So now we know when to do the estimation and what is the unit of agile estimation. Now let's see some key principles that we should keep in mind. First, we do relative sizing. Agile estimation focuses on comparing the sizes of one item relative to another. So let's understand what is relative sizing. So this book, what do you think will be the weight of this book? It's difficult to assess because we never measure book by its size. But if I show you another book, so now can you relatively size this? So now it might be easy, right? So this is probably twice the weight of the first book. So that's what is called the relative sizing. Even though you know, don't know the exact estimation, it is easy for you to figure out relatively. So in an agile team, as a team, they have to come up with some standards, some baseline, like this is what we call it as a two pointer story. And this is what we call it as a five pointer story. So that is set. And then in future, when they try to estimate any story, they compare it with those baselines. So you, they can know that this is like twice as much of the two pointer or a three pointer, probably this goes for a five pointer. So, so it will be easy for the team to actually compare it with the baseline and come up with the estimation. The second thing is about collaboration. So when we estimate, what happens if uh, different developers are coming up with a different estimate? Say there are five different developers and they are all estimating a story. They will be doing it separately. Like if two developers say it's a um, three-pointer and three developers say it's a five-pointer. So what is the final estimation? We don't go with five since that's a majority. So that's not the thing. Like how we do the estimation is... We have to get the consensus of the team. All of them should agree that it's a three pointer or a five pointer. So when there is a difference, it again goes up for a discussion and then people discuss on why they think it's a three pointer or a five pointer. And then they all come to a common understanding and agree that it's either a three or a five pointer. So I have seen cases where, you know, uh, we had differences like my, the majority case, uh, you know, rated it as a five pointer story and only a couple of them as an eight pointer. But after the discussion, it ended up being an eight pointer because there is a lot that other folks didn't forecast. So collaboration is the second key factor that we have to keep in mind while doing agile estimation. The third is the iterative refinement. After you come up with an estimation, it's not set on stone like for th this week, you are doing a refinement for a story, you know the scope and the next week you might, uh, while you are on a sprint planning also, you might come up with some additional scope or some scope changes. You can relook at the estimation again do the same exercise and come up with a new estimation. So these are some of the key factors that you have to remember while doing the agile estimation. If you want to know about how to use the planning poker technique for agile estimation, please watch out my video in the description below.